Hi muckers, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. Buckle up soldiers. We have the task of this <laughs> today. <laughs> we have the task of this. If you're willing to buckle up with me, I'm willing to buckle up. We are going to deploy and we are going to get through this. We can do it. So yesterday I posted that Tana Mojo posted literally like two days ago, her podcast with Jojo Siwa and it's almost getting ratioed. She's getting so much backlash in the comments. And Tana has had to do a statement. We posted a little recap yesterday if you want to watch it. Where we had her on before she went on Hai's podcast and defended Colleen. I did not know about any of this until today. We'll unpack in the next episode. So everyone's saying they've lost respect for the podcast. They're annoyed. This is why it's called a cancel podcast. But it's really important to know, like all the comments are just calling the site. It's important to know this is the the podcast that's literally called canceled so for the audience to be so pissed off it means that you know it's not that good it sounded like a fart uh fart joke um so tana mojo filmed this a couple weeks ago and obviously tana just had trisha on the just trish podcast trisha has been very outspoken about jojo siwa defending colleen so a lot of people were saying tana just told trisha that she's going to defend her and she's going to be there for her and then to immediately have jojo on who's saying that everything that happened was lies whenever trisha is also someone who was involved as a victim in this you know is tana going against trisha tana said nope now it's also questionable that she posted this but we're gonna watch it um i watched a little bit of this and then i had to give up on it so we are gonna soldier through this together i am daily vlogging on my second channel if you want to check it out it'll be pinned down below let's get into it we are gonna watch on 2x speed because this is an hour 20 you can watch the entire thing on the cancelled podcast in its original form if you want this will be around 40 minutes for us, which is a lot better timing. I'm going to have captions on and let's buckle up, soldiers. Hello and welcome back to the Cancelled Podcast. Today we have a guest that I never thought you would have. <laughs> and I like, definitely do not think the Cancelled Podcast audience is expected. Oh, sorry. It's important to note, like I said in my video, that JoJo is getting in a lot of trouble, number one, because of the clean thing. But number two, the Cancelled Podcast fans are not happy of how dismissive jojo was towards brooke who we see right here who's very pretty by the way right the entire time speaks to tana directly kind of ignores brooke unless brooke says something and people were saying that jojo came on brooke's podcast and basically just ignored her the entire time so we're gonna pick up on that too but let's get into it brooke is so pretty and it's such a surprise because it's like, I, well, first of all, today we have Jojo Siwa. Oh, hi, yeah. <laughs> Icon, living legend. I can't even describe you. you in a few words, and that's what I want to get into today. It's, um, it's actually, that's one of my favorite things is like seeing what TV shows or articles or whatever will like describe me as. Like, yeah. just, oh, well, they're describing you as, you know, not the greatest anymore. Which show? It was like Jojo Siwa, American dancer and author. I was like, valid. Nailed it. Sometimes okay. it's like Jojo Siwa, social media sensation and pop star. I'm like, yeah. valid. I swear to God, like she was just asking um, who our favorite guests are. Like, you're up there. Because it's like, I DM'd you. What an incredible introduction where Jojo's basically saying, actually, I'm much more than what you just introduced me as. Two nights ago, and I was like, will you come on cancel? Yeah. And you were like, yes. And you were like, I was like, Sunday work. And I was like, there's no way, like, in two days. Just immediate, like down, and it's just. Yeah, I think this is a perfect time for you to. Yeah, the thing is, is like you know, it's not a perfect time to post it. Maybe a perfect time to film it, but not post it. Oh, Tana. I loved you for forever. forever. And you asked me to do a few things yeah. that, like, I've wanted to do. Yeah. One of them, specifically, I remember, was a weed commercial. I don't know what I'm talking about. You tried to get JoJo in a weed commercial. I tried to get JoJo to be in the cannabis commercial smoking with me. But that's why I was just really. No, I was really ambitious and I really yeah, liked yeah. it. And at first, <laughs> second, I was like, oh my god, this would be hilarious. Like, but then, like, obviously, we both were like, no. By the way, if you watch videos sped up, you better slow it down now. I watch videos on 2x speed. So if you're watching this on 4x speed, Babe, I recommend you slow it down right now. <laughs> we are in this together. It's not right. Like, and then you're like, what if you... you were and by the way, I am aware that it is fast, but this is an IR-20. Soldiers, we have got to get through this in some capacity, even if we only understand every second word. <laughs> And you're like, well, you could say something in it that's like, hey, this is bad. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we tried to find it, and like, but it was just, it just never aligned. But now, you know, I'm crossing into like adult world, and, yeah. and now I'm, I'm I'm okay to be an adult. Not that I wasn't before, but it's more just like I've been on my own timeline, and it's like now I can. I think child can cancel and hope for the best. <laughs> I told her she can cut anything out. I was like, I can't imagine being her and like pulling up a rainbow fucking Lamborghini outside, like terrifying. Okay, actually, this is really quick. <laughs> 1.75 I could, and you can cut anything you want not truthfully I followed I was like finally here I, you go I'm so motherfucking excited to have yeah. you on today and I have I've known you literally forever and that's why I always ask you yeah. things like that because I've always known like how you are as yeah. a person you know what I mean but you kind of had to slowly ease into yeah. showing the world so much of that you yeah know? I mean listen I always from a young age have been very mature very unsheltered like very yeah. open to the world and nothing that I ever did was fake or was forced or was somebody telling me what to do I mean like literally with YouTube for example like I came up with created filmed edited and uploaded it all myself you know yeah. what i mean and so it's like nothing I did. but didn't she say on the how you mandal that the only reason she started youtube was because colleen inspired her wait what she's just changed her okay she also said no one has ever told me what to do hasn't that been the full thing that everyone's saying about like 
Abby Lee Miller and stuff, who, by the way, is such a fucking creep. Was ever fake or phony or character, but I I was young and yeah. I was. She got her lying lessons from Colleen. She got them from the department of Miranda Singh's LLC. 14, and I was working like a 37 year old, yeah, but I was filming like a 12 year old. You yeah. know what I mean? And so I, I was kind of all over the place age wise. But now that I'm older, it's like, hey, here's a side of me that like is there that no one's seen yet. Enjoy. Did you feel pressured? I feel like child stardom is such an interesting thing because it's like the world wants to view you at this age, like on yeah. Dance Moms with a bow in your hair for way longer than that is who you are. Like Miley really struggled with that. Demi yeah. all did. Like so many child stars have struggled with that. Did you feel pressure to be a JoJo that you yeah. were no longer for a long time? It's so strange because. There was moments where I used to tell my mom, this is why child stars go crazy. And I, anytime I would say that, we would fix whatever the problem was. Yeah. Why is she not looking at Brooke at all? We're about five minutes into her talking and she has not looked at Brooke once and Brooke has not, not looked her way once. <laughs> You're on Brooke's podcast. It's rude. Yeah, my mom's the best. I love your family. She's my whole family. Yeah, they're no, all look, this is so family. awkward. But my mom is always good about being like, okay, what's going on? This is so awkward. Brooke is like, Stop ignoring her. Like, and normally for me, it was there's something trying to be forced onto me because I yeah. started off on reality TV when I was nine. That's where I got my start. And then I jumped to social media when I was, and like that became my main thing when I was 11, 12. And so I've never been like famous for being a character, you yeah. know? So like there was never a box that I was in. It was always like, let's just navigate good. growing up. You know what yeah. I mean? You were saying that your mom was very good with that, which I'm so grateful yeah. for. I have such a, like, I know so many people were child stars and like just fucked up shit happened to yeah. them. And, like really like, I get chills every time I think about it. Like fucks in my head. On Dance Moms, did you see a lot of the other girls have moms that like did not move with the same values as yours? I've seen, a l I mean, I'm trying to think quickly on Dance Moms. Like, or just in the child Just in world. general, yes. Yeah. Like I've seen a lot of moms where I'm just like, oh, you're being what you think a stage mom should be, yeah, you know? And I always say there's there's a difference between good crazy and bad crazy. Yep. And listen, is Brooke usually to the side during these podcasts? No, Brooke and Tana have the same amount of dialogue. Um, JoJo is just being rude and dismissive towards Brooke here for no reason. I don't know why. To be uh, to be a child star, you do have to have parents that are driven. Yeah. You know what I mean? And our stage parents, like. Yeah. It's, but there is a good crazy and there's a bad crazy. Tish Cyrus, Beyonce's mom, yeah. for example. Like, I'm sure Miley's mom, Tish, and I, I can't think of Beyonce's mom's name, but they're they're a good crazy. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, still driving their kids across the country to get to, get them to an audition. They're and, but they're not like, yeah. yeah, but they're not like, wear this, do this, be this. But right, there are miserable. some bad stage moms. I don't yeah. want to shit on anybody, but we've all seen people who have come out and have. I'm so obsessed with JoJo looking at Brooke while she talks and then going, yeah, and then goes immediately back into talking to Tana. Brooke is trying to engage. We're already five minutes in, and this is very dismissive. Like to their parents, and it's yeah. tough. Like, you just. You, you you see why and I've had a lot of moments on like wow if I didn't have a good family this is why people go crazy yeah. in this position because it's so hard like the world sees and knows everything yeah. nothing at the same time yeah. you know what I mean oh, yeah. your parents were so good with you like coming out I went to your pride party this is right yes. after you came out first of all I have so many stories from that party we were just talking about downstairs <laughs> she wear the Gucci <laughs> shirt there like, 48 hours ago I decided to throw a party and then they'll be like literally they'll literally. be like a circus inside and it's like how did you get a circus we always call it shaking the fruit tree yes absolutely. and we always say too like sometimes it's better to just plan it last minute but yeah. the pride party specifically it literally I think it was June 1st and I told yeah. my mom I was like what are we doing? We're not, we, like, we need to have a pride party. It's my first pride. Yeah. She's like, let's fucking do it. And all of a sudden, June 3rd, we had a pride party. How long did they know for? Before, like, how long did your parents know? My parents. So, uh, okay, so go 2020, right? Yeah. Very late 2019, I met a best friend. And I specifically, like, asked this best friend. I was like, I was 16, she was 15. I really, I'm not even, I'm not even trying to just over push this argument now. But the fact that she is completely ignoring Brooke's presence and only speaking to Tana is so fucking rude is so fucking rude this is brooke's podcast with tana for example to kind of give you an example of how these podcasts normally look hello and cut to that wait yeah but the number one they sit and talk to each other you're finding at the club and then you find out like he's a shitty guy and it's like yeah you found him at the club but recognize you take me a couple like when we went to Zach Bryan the other day, they sit and talk to each other. And yeah, it is important to note that JoJo is in fact closer to Brooke. So it would be more, you know, apparent to talk to Brooke. But for some reason, she's just ignoring it. It's rude. You know, I was like, so how long have you known you were gay? And she was like, oh, I'm not, I'm straight. Like, I have a boyfriend. I was like, oh, no, you're gay. Like, come for me in six months. Like, you're, like she was like the only girl that I like, never knew she was gay. And so then she was like, what about you? Are you gay? And I was like, no, 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 no. And I was like, but like, if I was ever to fall in love with a girl, like, that'd be fine. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then okay. six months later. Wait, what? Know. JoJo went up to a girl and was like, are you gay? And she said, no, I have a boyfriend. And JoJo said, okay, well, come up to me in six months when you come out as gay. What? me um as bisexual and i literally straight up said i was like no you're not but we're getting warmer i was like Try <laughs> um, so the girl said she's bisexual and jojo said oh well we're finally getting warmer um and then six more months later i went on a family vacation yeah and she was gonna was it on a cruise ship it was not on a cruise ship. it was in disney world jojo has this thing where like something insane like relationship wise always happens to her on a cruise ship always on a cruise ship always on a cruise ship and disney world um, <laughs> 
Anyway, so we were going on a family vacation to Disney World. My mom was like, yo, you can bring a friend if you want. And I was like, okay, I want to see it. This girl could come. Same um, girl. Same girl, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I knew then she had like officially like come out to me and be like, hey, I think I really only do like girls or I don't really know. And I was like, dude, you don't need to know. Like, it's totally fine. And my parents asked me, they were like, what would you do if she tried to kiss you? Because we were best friends, but long distance yeah. best friends. And I was like, she would never do that. Like, got defensive of it. But in my head, I was like, eh, I kind of like it. So and then you your parents knew before you? Yeah. Like, my mom said you knew before did. your friend. Yeah. And then when we met. This is actually really weird. Look at that again. Brooke asked her a question. She answers no. She's back to looking just strictly at Tana. Like, literally not breaking eye contact with Tana. This is really weird. Up and I got in a car in the parking lot and was like, oh, she. Like, I just, I like, I just like, felt a feeling. Like, no. And Brooke's being so nice. She's still All of there. Um, <laughs> and so I was like, uh oh. And then she asked me straight up, she was like, do you have a crush on anybody? And I was like, yeah. You're like, yeah, you. And she was like, who? And I wouldn't tell her because it was her and I was embarrassed and she was my best oh, friend. And she would her. shit on me and I would shit on her. And so I got in my head, there's no way she would ever like me. Yeah. So I played the whole, I can't tell you game. Anytime um, Brooke says something, you know, JoJo will go like this. And she, she was like, well, is it a boy or a girl? She was the first person. Jojo ever. said, don't let the sexuality bite. It's so weird. And also, I'm just so annoyed with people that like when someone says that they're bi, they're like, okay, or give it time, or okay, but you're with a girl and you're a girl, so you're not bi. Like, said, I have a crush on a girl too. Aww. And so I admitted to her that I had a crush on a girl. So nine days later, I end up telling her that it's her. She says she has a crush on me, whatever. We have a cute little night, it's fun. The next day I have to say goodbye to her. Don't know when I'm going to see her again. We just confessed our love for each other. Like, what is this now? And so I, we're sobbing. I say goodbye to her. And then I literally get back. I get in the car with my family because I walked her to her car. I'm sobbing back in the car with my family. Go to the airport. And my mom goes, you really like her, don't you? And I was like, I do. And my mom's like, do you like her as a friend or as more than a friend? And I was like, more than a friend. Oh, and my dad's like, so sick. Sweet. No pregnancy scares. <laughs> and that is... And there, Brooke goes to say something and Jojo speaks over her. I get in the car with my family because I walked her to her. No, Jojo doesn't speak over her. When Brooke starts to speak, Jojo gets lighter. Look at this. In the car with my family go to the airport. And my mom goes, you really like her, don't you? And I was like, I do. And my mom's like, do you like her as a friend or as more than a friend? And Watch like, this. More than a friend. Oh, and my dad's like, so sick, sweet. no pregnancy scares. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that crazy? The time that Brooke says something, Jojo gets increasingly lighter. Goes, you really like her, don't you? And I was like, I do. And my mom's like, do you like her as a friend or as more than a friend? And I was like, more than a friend. Oh, and my dad was like, so sick, no pregnancy scares. <laughs> and that is how I came out to my parents. They're so fucking amazing. They were on top of it. They that made it amazing. Super, super easy for me. God, I have so many questions for you. Like, that entire story just, like, evoked 75 yeah. questions. But I guess your parents are so supportive. I feel like your friends, your friend group, they're all so supportive. Literally like, all of them. Which, and saying I kissed a girl. That's yeah. how I told everybody. Uh, and that's how you kind of came out, that's right? That's the only reason. Yeah, yeah. Like, so it was a TikTok, right? Yeah, so what happened was... um. Like, leaving that moment, I'm not going to stop at every single one, but I'm just trying to prove my point. Look at Brooke talking here, and she's just getting talked over. And that's what you kind of came out, right? The only reason yeah, yeah. It. So, so it's a TikTok, right? Yeah. You wouldn't even notice that Brooke was talking there, but because they're talking over her. So what happened was, um, the Pride House, who uh, Molly is, Molly Ray is, like, the, the leader of, who I've known. Yeah. yeah. So I've known Molly. Me. She's oh. on so you think, oh my gosh, come on, knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> Get it. So I know Molly. Well, maybe if you fucking talk to her. I was eight. Like, yeah. I've known her since before my first TV show. She's coming to my studio, like, been close for forever. Um, she has a TikTok group and they came over and we made a TikTok to the ain't it fun, ain't it fun, ain't it yeah. one of us. This was like a week after I'd fallen in love with a girl. Like they didn't know, I didn't tell anyone. I was still like, didn't know how to come out to people. So I only came out to like super close people. So we did that TikTok and then the world kind of speculated. Yeah. And the Pride House people, Molly was like, oh my God, like, we're so sorry. Like we don't push this on you. And I was like, no, no, no. I was like, it's true. So it's fine. I was like, but now you have to figure out like how to navigate it, yeah. what I want to do. And cause I wanted to come out to the world. I wasn't ashamed of it. I just didn't know how. Yeah. So then I made a TikTok to, I told my mom, I was like, I could either tease it, confirm it, deny it. And I'm not yeah. denying it cause it's true. Yeah. I can tease with it and like see how it goes or I can just straight up confirm it. So I decided to kind of test the water. So I posted a video of me just like jamming out to born this way. And that's wait, I remember yeah. this so vividly. So like, this was like a, like a really important moment. Like, yeah. I was in my kitchen. <laughs> I like know where I was. I was literally in my kitchen. Really? Like, I was in Greece. <laughs> okay, I'm going to point this one out as well. Look, Brooke is currently, you know, validating JoJo's story and saying she remembers it. Brooke looks at her and then looks back at Tana, finishing on the smile. Look. Doesn't even give Brooke anything. Watch this. It's true. Yeah. I can tease with it and like see how Watch this. So I decided to kind of test the water, so I posted a video of me just like jamming out to Born This Way. And that's what I remember yeah. this so vividly. So like, this was like a, like a really important moment. Like, yeah. I was in my kitchen. <laughs> I like know where I was. I was literally in my kitchen. Really? I was like, yeah. Oh, Brooke hold, held herself so much better than what I would do. See if I'm somewhere and I know someone's being really rude to me. I was in breaks. <laughs> She's like engraved in your memory. Um, so then, yeah, I, I posted that and then we're kind of speculated more. And they are going to bring this up in their next podcast. Tana did say that they're going to address all of this in their next podcast. Two days later, that same day, I posted all my close friends Instagram stories. I like, tell like, my like, next extended group of friends. I posted that picture of me wearing the t-shirt, best gay cousin ever. That, I remember that. And too. then I posted it on my close so friends. <laughs> Why do I remember the shirt? I love it. I love it. And then like three days later, it was the middle of the night. I was on FaceTime with my girlfriend. And I wasn't getting good sleep at this time because I would just stay away reading the internet, reading theories about myself. Yeah, the worst. And I told her, I was like, you know what? I want to post this. And I'm like, I want to tell the world. I want to just post this picture. And she was like, do it. And it was like two in the morning. And I was like, okay, sent. And that was it. That's amazing that's exactly what it should be and it's so awesome to see that you have so much control over that like you're, you're in yeah. a bed you're like i'm gonna post a selfie not like a whole team yeah. i like thing. it just wasn't that big a deal it's like yeah. okay. well that's what's yeah. the wild. problem with coming out like i feel like people feel so
Jojo is giving Brooke is conversation enders, but Tana is conversation starters. And it's just rude. Three years older. Yeah. And I can't imagine how I'm going to feel in three more years. But I look yeah. back at myself and I'm like, whoa, like to be a 17 year old yeah. and to just go for it and to have no fear. I was like, I didn't understand at the time why people are like, whoa, like yeah. that was brave. Yeah. And like, I don't know, coming out, coming out is a brave thing. Yeah. But it shouldn't have to be. Yeah. It should just be a thing. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, it, you probably felt like just supported though. I feel like a lot of people just don't feel like naturally supported. Especially close to you. you it's know? so weird because I did. And I was like, this is fucking incredible. Like the world had shown so much love, so much support. And then I read comments and it was the opposite. Don't do that. It was so, I remember, I remember vividly I had like 52,000 comments in 24 hours. Like I never. And it was like the first. Jesus, people, Jojo, you give an eye contact to Brooke? I'm surprised. After that, it was, I kid you not, if it was 52,000 comments, it was 51,800 negative comments. Same. And I was just like, I'm never going to let my kid watch you again. I'm never going to buy a bow again. Like, burning okay, all so my time. I think about that, like all the conservative yeah, parents. Yeah, and That's that, sad as fuck. that was a moment for me where I was like, oh. And then I realized like, look, if somebody's not going to like me because <coughs> on the seventh I was straight to their knowledge and on the eighth I was gay to their knowledge, like, look, I've been gay for the last 17 years. Like, Obsessed with Brooke doing this and nodding along and stuff and JoJo just only looking at Tana. When you're talking to people, you know, like. It's, you point, know, like, it's like major change overnight. Like, and it's not a bad thing. Thing, you know yeah. what I mean? Like I, I'm not. I think it's sick that you like doubled. Sorry to cut you off. No, you're fine. You're fine. You just doubled down on it. A lot of people would have been. Tana goes. I'm sorry, I cut you off there. What has been happening to Brooke the entire time? Basically, diversity like that and kind of changing everything they know and like a lot of people also just you know they want the money over there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you really stay true to who you are. And yeah, and that's, I was like, if somebody's gonna go away because I'm happy, then I don't want them to like me anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's hard because then I'm thinking about all these little kids now that their mom is telling them they can't like me because. So, you that's know, not what your I mean? pressure. That's not your no. journey. That's you know what I mean. You can't hold the whole world. Yeah. You were like about not six, nine, I guess is when you started. But yeah. you're about to have a fucking. Not even nine to five. Where, how much? Like, how much were you Wait, working were you, every you day nine when you started? So I did my first TV show when I was nine. Dance Moms was very regulated. So while I was on Dance Moms, there's child labor laws that are put in action. You can we would work. We'd do school from eight to eleven. We'd eat from eight nine to eleven. Yeah, we'd eat from eleven to twelve. We'd film from twelve to four. We'd have classes for just regular dance from four to ten. We'd repeat it the next day. Yeah, but film, kind of yeah, that's just the dance world though. But like, that's, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's not on camera. Just doing dance or not? Yeah. 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 Why the fuck is she just talking over Brooke? This is so rude. It's Eight to eleven, we'd eat from eight nine to eleven. Yeah, we'd so rude. Film from four, we'd have classes for just regular dance from four to ten. We'd repeat it the next day. Yeah, but film, kind of yeah, that's just the dance world though. But like, that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's not on camera. Whether you're on dance or not, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just speaking over. But then once I jumped to social media, I mean, it was all me. So I would take two hours to film a video, two hours to edit a video, two hours to psychoanalyze if my thumbnail was doing good <laughs> or not. And I would yeah. some nights stay up and keep refreshing videos to see. If Tana it was with that damn video. vape. So there was days, I mean, where I would work myself yeah. fucking 16 hours. But you think then, that affected you like mentally at all? Like obviously it was your choice. Like you were yeah. sort of saying my parents weren't. And I remember even at like 15, like I was so passionate about it that I would do shit like that. Yeah. But like, do you think that it affected you over time to care about numbers and care about weird shit like too much? There was one night, I'll never forget, we were in New York, we were at the Marriott painting the picture. <laughs> and I was maybe 14, I would say 14, maybe 13. And I was obsessing over a thumbnail with numbers and my mom had never taken anything away from me. She never took my phone. She always joke about like, I'll take your phone. I was like, do it, then I don't get to work for three days. Like yeah. I would always like make shit of it. And I was obsessing over a thumbnail and the video wasn't hitting and I was proud of the video. And like, yeah. I, you know when you like had a video and you're like, it's, it's gonna a hit, hard feeling. And then it just doesn't. Yeah, it's a hard so feeling. New thumbnail, new thumbnail. I probably had made like honestly eight new thumbnails just like refreshing to watch the 60 seconds to see yeah. if it would get a thousand more. Like yeah. crazy. And my mom literally walked up to me, slammed my laptop and took it. And she was yeah. like, you're done. She was like, it's midnight. Yeah. You, I have you awake in the morning. And she was like, you have to be awake in the morning. We're not gonna obsess over numbers like this. And yeah. I was like, no, but you don't understand. Like I need to. And she was like, no, I do understand. And I'm your mom and I've never done this, but I'm gonna do it now. You're done. And I was like, that's a that's like really positive. That's yeah, really, that's like so really not true really for so many people. Yeah. You just said Marriott, and I evoked eighty three questions because you're Jodeci. Um, did you? When did you know you were rich? rich when did you become rich? <laughs> no, I can't even. I say that I rich as fuck. When did you know you were rich as fuck? Like, I, yeah, I literally like. Her, I, I just say that to her. She's so fucking humble. Don't even get me started on how humble Jojo is. So I'm not saying like she acts like it, but it's like that. Jojo opened this by saying that you basically didn't describe her with enough things. You know, she's a book author. All like, but also Jojo didn't Jojo literally say, "Oh, it was such a sheltered life and stuff like." Or, unsheltered life sorry you know but now we're rich like what is the narrative what are we the house the car like you're fucking loaded bitch as you should <laughs> when did you know did your parents let you know when did you you know just everything i want to know i'm trying to think if there's like a specific moment where i was like oh truthfully i i won't lie literally like maybe two weeks ago <laughs> <laughs> maybe i found out how much like we had saved she's in her like, lamborghini <laughs> she like, sees a prius she's like damn <laughs> she's like, it's, it's good out here no like two weeks ago i like finally processed because okay so i had a coogan account okay oh my god so oh, coogan account, yeah coogan account takes 15 percent of every penny you make while you're a child and yeah. it has to go in their labor laws in california yeah and so my biggest financial income was consistently my youtube and so like i would see that come in every month but then my like big 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 like chunkers were uh, <laughs> i made up a i made up a word today platonism i love platonism i love platonism that's my new word <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense to me. Yeah, that's um, I make up words on this podcast every week. Yeah, and then there's like 80 tweets about how stupid I am. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> um, and, and, and so my merchandising, mm. when, when those checks come in, like whatever. Like you knew the bows were bringing in the yeah, dough. Yeah, and then... Like, JoJo has literally been on podcast being like, there have been like 100 million bows sold, but you only realize you're rich two weeks ago
Like, yeah, like, Jeanette McCurdy's mom. No, they can't. Yeah. So that's whatever. why they invented Kugan accounts. Because it was oh. the opposite. They would take their money, and then they were left okay. with nothing. But wait, yeah. wasn't it Jeanette McCurdy said that her mom never, like, properly filled out the paperwork? That, that also never happens. went. That's, yeah. 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 Never, she never set it up properly. Yeah, she didn't. Her mom got all the money. I mean, that's why that's there, to try to protect you. Yeah. But some parents still are just shady, yeah. yeah. Um, so when I turned 18, I could, I had to go and get the Kugan account, like, yeah. and transfer all the money. But I, we did it for a minute. We waited until I was probably 19, 19 and a half. Like, it, we just did all the paperwork. Because it's a process. Mm. And once I was able to process, like, oh, this is 15%, add 85% of what this is, and that's that number from nine to 18 blew my mind. Like that was oh like damn gosh. hard work, but so worth it. Giving yeah. up childhood, so worth it. You That's know crazy. what I mean? Like it's tough, don't get me wrong. Like I've, I've but I've, I like, it's, yeah. I don't know. I I always say like now, like I'm able to do things for others. I'm able to treat others. I'm able to take people on vacation. And you're set for life. Because I work so hard. So you get to do what yeah, you like, want to do downstairs, like, yeah. That's your dream. Like you love to be able to do those kinds of things. Yeah, I do. When you were like 13 and the bows are on sale, like did you know at that point how much it was making or were you kind of like, also like your lifestyle. Yeah. Like, did you grow up? I have so many questions. Like, no, yeah. Um, my family grew up healthy. We didn't grow up. I mean, we weren't rich. We were uh, middle class. Like yeah. my dad was a chiropractor, so he had a great job. My mom owned a dance studio, so she had a great job. My brother went to private school. I was homeschooled. Like we yeah. Very middle class. <laughs> oh, a incredibly middle class chiropractor your mom had a dance studio your brother went to private school you were homeschooled very 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 middle class jojo okay what the we had a very nice comfortable life but then like there was a point in time where while i was on dance moms you know we we got there we, my mom dropped everything left the studio my dad brother stayed in nebraska and we got my first check for being on dance moms and we were like no like we can't live off of this for yeah. what we're doing and like it wasn't us being shady it was a very very or, or greedy, I guess it's better. It wasn't yeah. being greedy. It was a very small check. And it was like, we were like, we literally can't do this. Yeah, and you don't know, know that enough. Like, it's especially pilot beginning season. Yes. You're making no money. You don't know, you're making yeah. nothing. And you got to put your time in. And then we did. We made it work. We put our time in and it ended up being good. But then, you know, there was times where we were living in an apartment and it was me and my mom in one bedroom. We turned the living room into my bedroom. My clothes were stored in the kitchen cabinets. Yeah. Like, not to say that, like, we struggled. We were always blessed. Yeah. We always had food on our table. But, like, I think people think that, like, I just got everything handed to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, like, nah, there was never, there was never a point in time where it was like, yeah, honey, do whatever you want. Like, yeah. mommy, and, mommy and daddy got you. Abby used to say that. Like, daddy works on the weekend, so you can do whatever you want. And I'm like, nah. Like, my dad works hard for a house payment. Like, were you always like, because that's such a. But JoJo just basically said how much of a privileged life they have, but now they were living out of one room. She's she's sassy. I, mean... I love when rich people use like being middle class as like the humble beginnings. That's just normal. I mean, that's yeah. a nice way of putting it. You know that's what I mean? But yeah. um, she fucking talks great. Like, and you were one of the only ones who kind of talked back to her and like be like, you know, yeah. like stand up for yourself. Did that ever affect you though? Like the yelling and the shit that she said? You know, it's interesting because- yeah, She yeah. literally moved to like expensive American city so she could be on the show as well. So the one bedroom rent, if that story is true, by the way, was probably very expensive. No, like once I, so I went into Dance Moms being a fan of Dance Moms. Yeah. And like number one fan still am. Like I literally watch Dance Moms every day. I watch it a lot too. I fucking love it. Like I'm obsessed with that show. And so I knew what I was getting myself into. And it, I'll never forget it was like week, maybe like two or three. And, or no, because it was when I started to be on the pyramids. So oh, really Brooke like, just has her arms crossed now. She's just given up. <laughs> Brooke has given up. He's always on the fucking bottom of the pyramid. And I'll be like, dude, I literally told my mom. I was like, the people at the bottom get the TV time. The it really is just fucking crazy. I'm going to say it again. She's really just talking to Tana, talking at Tana, sorry and just staring at her and it's just so invalidating to the person's podcast you're on brooke it's so rude top, congratulations you're on top that's it yeah if you're on the bottom then your mom fights with abby and then you get more tv time you, you always know been I mean? an adult yeah and I, <laughs> she's a genius yeah thank you but that's i mean like i never i don't know i yeah it was good of you you know what i mean yeah. like and like you're cool with abby brooke just yeah. made a comment here and she still looked at tana i was just doing her job too yeah you know what i mean yeah. and, and like, that's the dance like that's just how the dance, dance community is yes dance teachers are not typically nice like yeah. there are they some nice dance teachers but like Jenna is my fucking best. She needs to stop talking over Brooke. In the world. Like, I, she is the sweetest angel in the world. I'm so conscious when I'm with people that I'm not cutting them off or whatever. JoJo must just be so. Uh. So look at that. You just saw a moment where Tana and Brooke were talking to each other, and JoJo stares at Tana the entire time. We used to laugh because every she was my partner on Dance with the Stars, so yeah. she is like my most recent like main dance teacher. You know yeah. what I mean? And, and we would laugh because every Friday I would have a mental breakdown. Yeah. And it was never her being mean to me. She was always so fucked by being middle class. She didn't deserve to be nice. Like I needed to be told to get my act together. She like. I just always, as a dancer, put so much pressure on myself. You know what yeah. I mean? That like, that's just how it is as a dancer. You yeah. know? I mean, I guess everyone took it differently. You know what I mean? Because other people obviously don't like Abby yeah. now, right? Yeah, like, it's yeah, it's a thing. I think I guess it's just different. She speaks really highly of JoJo. Like I feel like I saw yeah. her like saying later on, like she's been so successful. I'm so proud of her. That's the thing. Like I know that I would not be where I am today without Abby, without Dance Moms, without those producers. Like if I could go back in time, I would do it all over again. You know? It's a flex. There are a, most I would say most people that have gone through the Dance Moms ring have come out and been like, "Fuck that." You yeah. know what I mean? And I don't know. I just. I'm a firm believer of like remember where you came from and that's Did you see right. moments like that like where Brooke goes to say something and she like stops because she knows she's gonna get spoken over. They're wrong for how they're, yeah. they're treating it. They're, they're validate their feelings. It's, yeah. it's so true too for like all of reality TV because if you think about anyone who's come out of like the hills or something, everybody has so much shit to talk about, like the show. Yeah. And it's like, but you have everything you have now because of the show. And, and it, it might you, be a horrible experience for you. Yeah. yeah. But 
you like you can't and i do think know. like maddie jojo she wasn't done her statement when she started and so like mm. she didn't know what she was getting herself into you know what i mean yeah. and, like maddie and that's and, all the parents was a good, another good parenting, mom, yeah. she let them stop when they wanted to stop yeah yeah, yeah and that was the thing like they're i think maddie and kenzie when their contract was up that's when they left mm -hmm. um and i could be very very wrong on that so mm -hmm. don't hold me to that but there was a lot of t dance moms i will say you could leave at any point in time there was a set psychiatrist and yeah. at any point in time if you uh, the kids on the show she would always say when you want out tell me yeah. i can get you out and so like we always had that that's crazy that's good but in the moment you didn't want to you know what yeah. i mean like i wouldn't oh, i'm fucking nine on a show i'd be like let me go yeah <laughs> you know what i really want to talk about really quickly give it to me because i don't know if you've ever talked about it on a podcast Ooh. and maybe you have and maybe you have i don't know i grew up on full house i love full house <laughs> And I was rocking with DJ Tanner, okay? But now you ain't. She's the only person who ever has like publicly detested you coming out, right or no? Even before I came out, Jody Sweden has always been so sweet to me. Andrea Barber's That's always been so sweet right? to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Stephanie, Kimmy, um, Joey, Danny, Bless Bob Saget, um, and uh, 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 John Stamos. I want to watch Full House because John Stamos, I saw him on the 4th of July at the Beach Boys concert. And he was fine. Jesse, always so kind to me. Yeah, the fact that you know all of those people. I guess, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess Aunt Becky was busy. Well, no, Aunt, no, <laughs> I was just about to Aunt say, Becky was. Oh yeah, she was. Sorry, Aunt, she was, Aunt Becky, who was Lori Loughlin, yeah. was Olivia Jade. Her daughter was on my season of Dance with the Stars. She was always so kind. <laughs> love Olivia Jade. Yeah, yeah. Love Olivia. So sweet. Um. Uh. Yeah. So yeah, Candace has a we have a homophobic past, and that's okay. <laughs> <Are> we. <laughs> just a we. Um. And that's it is what it is. Um. Yeah. And anyway, so I had an experience with her when I was 11 at the Fuller House premiere, where she was not nice to me. To your face. To my face. Yeah. So I. Can I ask how? Yes. Yes. So look, it's gonna sound like I'm being dramatic, but put yourself in my shoes. You're talking to me. So. <laughs> <laughs> no better off. All yeah. better off. So um, everyone was so nice. I was 11. Baby, I love Full House my whole life. Like, it's my safety show. I watch it before uh -huh. I fall asleep. Like, I love it. And I go up to her and I talk to everybody that whole night. Everyone knew who I was. Yada, yada, yada. I go up to her. I'm like, hi, can I take a picture with you? I love you. Everyone knew who I was. Of course. Of course, JoJo. Because at age 11, you're the biggest celebrity in the entire world. She says, no. Fine. Fine. Like, I don't care. I get it. Like, I've also, like, been there. I understand. I've never said no to a picture, <laughs> but, like, I can understand why people do sometimes. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, it's okay. Like, no worries. And she's like, maybe later. And I was like, that's fine. Turn around. And then within, like, three seconds, I turned back around and she was taking pictures with other kids. And so it was really, like, I was hurt as an 11 year old. Yeah. So, anyways, cut to 11. Like, that would have, I would have literally carried that with me to my grave. Yes. So shattered. She's the like, only person that's ever said no to me. And then. But JoJo there? just opened the story with being like, okay, well, everyone else knew who I was. So that's her issue that this person, I don't know who this is, I haven't watched Full House, didn't know that JoJo was famous. That's the problem here for JoJo. Oh, but to take a picture with me, I should, people have said no to me, but like said no to taking a picture with me to my face and then turned around and did it with like, other people. Yeah. You know that happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> so then got to a few years later, uh, like a year, two years ago, I did TikTok where they was like trying to like flash your phone and like show like, I have a crush on this person. Yeah. I don't like this person. So I did that and I said, rudest celebrity that I've ever met was her. Blew up on the internet and I was like, fucking hell. Like yeah. you could see it. People paused it to figure out it was her. You could. Oh, I don't know. Then they compared the silhouettes and like it was obvious. And I was like, fuck me, right? So her. anyways, it got really public. Oh my God. Like, Repercussions of my own actions. Heaven forbid. Friends. So she reached out to our mutual friends. We had a phone call. She asked me to make a statement. I was like, no, I'm not gonna make a statement. But if you do, like, I'll reply to it, clear the air. And so I did. And I, I did regret posting what I posted because I was like, she, like, neither of us deserves the internet. Because all her people came at me. All my people went at her. And I was like, just, yeah, we don't need it. You know that's what I mean? Shit like that happens. I mean, it happens to me all the time. Yeah. You do something you don't think it's gonna be. And I'm like, literally it's a fun trend and kind of forget like how big. It really is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm gonna do shit that's wrong. And that's the worst thing that's wrong that I do, which is probably is the worst thing that I've done. Um, Good for you. <laughs> that's a win. A win is a win. A win is a win. <laughs> a win. Um, anyway, so then it comes out a few months later that she. I'm obsessed. Watch Brick. She's not giving up, and she's just posing in the viewfinder. She does that quite often anyway, but she's just, she's given up. Started talking some pretty homophobic things. A few things came out about her privately that I know about. And I was just like, duh, like we, <laughs> we cleared the air. Like I got a family of people that I got to stand up for. Like, yeah. so I called her out again and I just was like, you know what? We are, she said some pretty really bad stuff about the LGBTQ community. And I was just like, you have right. some family that you have to stand up for. You mean like what? Your bi erasure from earlier when someone comes out to you as bi and you go, mm, halfway there. <laughs> yeah, Jojo. The the absolute voice of angels for the LGBTQ plus. Never gonna agree. We're not gonna be friends. And you tried. Like, I you tried. tried to make it right and give her a second I chance did. to be good. And like I do think she has a really unique platform where her following is very religious. She has a platform where she is able to have such a religious following that she could be like, hey, this is okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, That's she, what I mean. Like, and cool. she does quite the opposite. She makes and it worse. what she says, so it could be like really beneficial. It could be for, like, super. Yeah. yeah. But you know, I really love that about you though. Like in so many situations, like even then, everything you've been saying, like you could have done something easier, mm -hmm. and you did like the right thing that was hard with like such bravery. And I just respect the shit out of it. I'm not I I try to be brave. You, you really, really <laughs> fucking are. And you always have, and I've known you for Thank so you. fucking long. And it's just it's awesome. When was the first time we met? Can I please tell the story? Yes, because I don't. I know what story you're about to tell, but I can't picture. When was the first time you met Brooke? I want to know that story. Age. I can't picture when. So okay. give me as much detail. I was either 17 or 18, and we're like four and a half years apart. So I was like 14. I don't even know. 13. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. I think I was 17. Um, I was at VidCon, and not supposed to be there. You were definitely a feature creator. I definitely wasn't. <laughs> I was in the fucking feature creator area, and I think I met your mom or your family member. Someone was looking for us. I was with my manager, and we were just talking, whatever. And I think it was your mom. And I think she's like, my daughter loves you, like whatever, like was talking to me, whatever. She was like, and your parents have always kind of let
figure the world out on your own. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, our daughter's gonna be so fucking famous, exposed to the whole world. Like, I'd rather see some shit and teach her the right way than yeah. act like the world doesn't exist. Yeah. So you had stumbled across my videos, <laughs> and I'm standing with these like ropes, like VIP, we're inside of like VIP ropes, right? <laughs> and I see Jojo. I, I think you did a cartwheel. Um, and you're like <laughs> down, you're down the hall from like me talking to your mom. And you see that I'm talking to her, and you start charging, <laughs> charging, <laughs> charging at me, my manager, and your mom. And I swear to God, I think you did some type of like trick, like a cartwheel, like some type of thing. No, and, you, and you hop this rope, and you come up to me, and you go, you're, 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 and we're in the middle of this fucking room. And everyone's just there. That's the first thing she says to me. She's like, I, I just, I saw that video and I think you're so funny. Your mom was like this. And I was like, I don't even think I said anything. She did my you in my defense, at that age, no, 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 because it's hilarious. I didn't know what that meant yeah, at, all. at that age. At all. And I think I said your mom, I wasn't about like, to. I but my mom probably didn't know. Yeah, you know, know. And I, 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 oh my God, Brooke just made a joke about that and they both just didn't acknowledge her. Brooke. I feel so bad. I said nothing back because I was just like, I didn't know. I don't know if you knew either. You know, I wasn't about to be like, that's yeah. you. You know what I mean? And then we didn't, at that time, like you were way younger and I was like 17 or whatever. And I don't think we actually became like real, real friends until I was probably like 19 or 20. You were a little bit older. Yeah. I just started seeing you at events and I yeah. like your whole family. So I, I met your brother like a million times. At this Not moment. befriending JoJo when she was a child. What a concept. My brother met, like, I think y'all got playlists live together. Yes. My brother's like, I met Tana. We're going to become great friends. <laughs> Honestly, I fucking love him. I really, really, awesome. really. Because you were used to adults befriending you. Yeah, over time, then I just started coming to your parties and like just different stuff yeah. like that. I don't really know how it like just as progressed. Later, yeah. sure. I remember happened. seeing you at Horror Nights. Oh, yes. And like that was the first oh, time that I like Horror Nights. I was like, sounds on very nice. Right, like for damn it. Was. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, I think like, it was a whore that night. I actually remember I was with an embarrassing ass TikTok. I don't even want to say anyways. <laughs> so I think I remember you were with. I'm talking about God loving motherfuckers. Anyways. <laughs> um, um. Anyways, yeah, I remember that night. Like, I felt like I was. Able God, to Brooke is so uninvolved or unincluded in this. Like, I felt like, oh, I'm not just a fan of this girl anymore. Yeah. Like, she's like, we're like a homie. Like, like, we freaked out seeing each other. I, I yeah, like we were thing. excited. We were excited yeah. to see each other. Um, yeah. yeah. And then time just went on, and you've always been so. And then time asked me to do a week commercial. Yeah, so and like, boy, did she? But you are just like so welcoming. I think that was really cool because even just all of the events and parties and shit that you had. I love knowing that Tana in her next podcast is gonna walk back on all this because she's literally said that she didn't know about all the JoJo stuff and she's gonna address it. So. <laughs> Wanting me there always meant a lot to me because I was like, listen, I'm not this girl's brand. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then after you came out and stuff and we're, you know, finding your adulthood, we found more common ground and yeah. stuff because I was like, yes, you're being you and like, I'm so proud yeah. of you like that. I think too, um, like, even though you were never my brand, like, I mean, that's, uh, we, we, we never, we never had the same demographic is a better way to put it. Yeah. But then like meeting you in person and like, just like over the four minutes that we would hang out at a time over the course of six years by three times, you know what I yeah. mean? We had very similar vibe, personality, values. Yeah. Not that Isn't it crazy that 17-year-old Tana Mojo knew better than to befriend a 13-year-old Jojo Siwa, but a 30-something-year-old Colleen Ballinger didn't know to, or 28-something? What we were putting out in the world was fake, but yeah. at some point it's like... So it's not a difference in the timing it of the world, because it would have been similar years. You just kind of can have a conversation with somebody that vibes or it doesn't. And both know? of us also, I feel like, have the type of brand where people assume we are only what they see. Yeah. You know, like, like that I'm only crazy and I'm only rosy. You and you're all <laughs> and you're all bows and glitter and sunshine. Yeah. And in reality, like you can be like real and super chill yeah. and I can not be a demon. Like, you yeah. know, so we can relate on certain yeah. things, which is good. And I was always surprised too that like you you keep up with all the, the drama side of shit. Like, you know what I mean? I did back in the day. Now yeah. I'm a mess. Now like, yeah. I know nothing. I literally I just did a show, I don't know if y'all watch Vanderpump. Um, I love you Vanderpump. love Vanderpump. So I just did Special Forces with Tom Sandoval. Okay. And Isn't he in the midst of like he yeah. is in the midst of like the biggest cancellation in the sure, world. Really. And I What do you do? Like the, the girl wore a shirt. Not with, Tom. She had the sex and then she released shirts or that's I mean I love that. That's such a tiny little thing, but basically he was like with somebody for like seven years and he was sleeping with her best friend the whole time. And, oh, okay, anyway. and then he said you kept your shirt on during sex and that's where the shirt thing came from. Okay, okay, okay. Beats me all of it. Yeah. And so like there was moments when we would be together because how special forces is is you are together for up to eight days. I can't Jojo Siwa aligning with problematic people for attention. Where have we seen this one before? Um, Shane, like Je Jack, James, Colleen. On camera, but there's no producer, director, cameraman around. It's all pretty much robo. Um, you you sleep in like accommodations that are like, like uh, not beds. I mean, it's two metal things. You're in the same room as big as this. This is like a big brother she it's, went on. It's, it's military training, basically. Okay. So it's it's very, it's very real. I, I would die. You would not last 24 hours. I, I, I love you die. so much. You would never I think I'd last 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> like, would, would Brooke, would Brooke last? Give her some involvement in this. Oh my god. Brooke could have just called in sick in this day and fucking JoJo wouldn't have noticed. Yeah, it's very intense. So um, what is that? Can you talk about what that entails? Like things you did? Yeah, um, so I can I can talk about things that have been like in the trailers. Um so we there are so many wild challenges, um, tasks. We every day would do fuck, I can't talk about how many we would do a day, but so just some of the challenges. There was this one that um they love airing. It's um we called it the gymnasium. <laughs> um, but basically it's like two ladders and you have to walk across them, like kind of waddle like a baby across yeah. them, and you're on there's just three hundred feet below you and you have to make it across or fall. Uh, and as well, I mean, you're roped in and like you're gonna free fall for three seconds and then the rope will stop you and then they have to drag you back up. Um, there was one where you had to army crawl across a singular rope across two mountain peaks. Again, 300 Sounds feet. like I'm a celebrity uh, in the UK. Uh, we were in New Zealand filming, so it was freezing cold. Uh, Brooke literally asked a question and Jojo didn't even stop talking and now Brooke is just like giving up. Um, and they, the helicopter lowers you. Literally just ignored Brooke. And it's freezing water, so
It's, what did you say? So do you have a death wish? Like, why would you put yourself through that? We had a summer yeah, times. Yeah, there, I mean, there's so Too much soon. that went... I mean, there, there is... Have y'all seen the trailer for it? I've, I've I haven't seen it. Okay, I'm I want to show you the trailer. Wait, I want to see because it'll put a lot into perspective. Like you're like, oh shit. I'm gonna do it on the phone. Sorry, before. No, uh, no, you're not. We'll insert it though. It'll be coming out on this course. The cold's gonna be the great equalizer. I actually couldn't be bothered to watch this. Or did I? Oh, man, I, I, I think I took 500 photos last night. Yeah. Like I just felt like I was. I love Trisha Paytas' houses like that too. Like certain people just yeah. Paris Hilton. Like just certain people have houses. They're so like like branded like themselves, and they keep everything, which I think is so cool. It's something I definitely regret like not doing. But um. Do you, so you, you were just saying this off camera, you have a place here that you kind of use a storage. Have yes. you kept everything? Everything. JoJo I archives. Everything. I have every costume. Um, I have like all my tour props. I have everything. Your kids one day are going to have the sickest life. I, I love that though. That's, I want kids tomorrow. I want kids I immediately. I was to go to oh my day. God. Every comment Brooke goes to make, she doesn't get to finish it. She goes, I love the. I never will have a guest to be like, we based on my friends. Because if it's like my grown ass friends and they're asking me and they're excited about yeah. guests, I'm like, fucking fuck off. But you are, I was. I asked you nervously because you're the first time I've ever asked someone. Ari's like, oh, my sister is like 10 and she loves you. And we just called she's, her. And she had a JoJo oh, no, bow on. Eight. She's eight. Oh, she's eight. Precious. And your interaction with her was so good. You've had so much yeah. training meeting kids your whole life as a yeah. kid and not like, and with kids. Yeah, know? I kind of learned how to talk to somebody while they don't talk to you. Yeah. And it's been able to be a really great. <laughs> oh, JoJo, in watching this podcast, we know. We know. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, she's a little bit. She's aware. She knows. She knows thing because sometimes I talk to kids who physically can't talk back to yeah. me. You know, the the woman beside you. Well, like I've done a lot with Make a Wish, yeah. where some kids physically cannot speak, and it's interesting to like learn. I've really learned how to read a kid and how to once I find that thing that makes them smile. And remember when you and Shane made a Make a Wish joke in the video with Shane you just made as well, but him taking photo with you is like Make a Wish. I'm sure the kids would love that as well. Going at it, you know what I mean. And once I found what they're interested in, like I asked her if she was in second grade, and she was like, No, I was in the mall today. You know what I mean? But if she'd been like, Yeah, I'm in second grade. I'd be like, Oh, what's your favorite subject in school? You yeah. know what I mean? Like you keep going on that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I just I love little little babies. I think they're awesome. I think they make the world a better place. And I can't wait to bring a bunch of them into the world. I can't wait. Your kids really are gonna have the sickest, sickest. Cool. Like, do, you, do you find that like you're professionally awesome. trained expert at being self absorbed? now is do you think it's still like very young demographic or do you think they've kind of grown with you a bit a little bit of both so i kind of have an all over the place demographic it's really confusing so i have like the little littles now like one of my best friends baby is always like, i want jojo Boba show show and yeah. they're so why are you choosing to promote predators and grimmers on your platform you're just acknowledging here that babies watch you Not even two yet. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yesterday, I was like, don't know what the fuck. <laughs> um, and then there's like the like eight year olds who are like into it, like into like hold the drama. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like into the bows, into the slime, into the YouTube videos. Then there's like the 14 year olds that were eight, you know, six years ago and they like kind of grew up with me. And then there's like the 17 year olds who are like the dance moms fan base now, like that's just watching dance moms. And then there's like the 25 year olds who like dance moms back in the day. You know what I mean? Holy it's like, shit. And I feel like you probably have like the whole gay community. I was gonna say, it's, it's, like, gay. it's crazy. Yeah. There's like, like, it just, it's so growing and it's, I don't understand either myself how it gets younger, but it's cause I mean, YouTube's out oh, there for forever. Yeah. yeah, I'm kind of the first, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you're in an everyone before me was, I mean, Miley and she had Hannah Montana and then Hannah went away and she became Miley. Yeah. You know, Demi had Sunny with a Chance and then that yeah. went away and Camp Rock went away and now she's Demi, you know what I mean? They're Demi. Um, they wanted to like eliminate it though. Yeah. So just in case you missed that, Jojo Siwa is better than Miley Cyrus and Demi Lovato, okay? And has done her career way better than theirs. Back to she now, by the way. I, I believe know. so too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, I don't know. Why did I say that? Anyway, <laughs> okay. because she said they, and then I said she I and they. Like like so Demi's also now. just—I mean, Demi's the fucking coolest. Yeah, awesome, Absolutely awesome human, nice human, awesome. Anyways, I don't remember what I was talking about because ADHD is really, really high here. But that was, that was the demographic. The demographic. Yeah, the demographic gets younger and younger. Like Boomerang, you'll love this because like you know YouTube numbers. Boomerang was released. Oh, I hate doing this myself. Seven years ago, almost eight. God, you're so old. <laughs> but when you think about it, like seven, like think about like a whole seven-year-old child. Like that's like grown. You know what I mean? So we're at seven years ago and it still gets about 200,000 views a day. Yeah. She really said, I'm the first child star to say successful. And she's absolutely correct. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's all I can take Get out of here. A day. And the touring, I didn't even talk about that. Like, was touring, your meal, was touring harder than Dance Moms? I love tour so much. Yeah. Like, being on tour is my favorite thing in the world. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine I, your bus. It's probably, the bus probably talks to you. It's like one bus. <laughs> <laughs> um, we call it the Four Seasons on Wheels. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine. Um, <laughs> the Ritz on Wheels. Just JoJo on the side all yeah. over. I wanted to wrap my bus and they wouldn't let me for security because I was still a kid. Well, yeah, that's probably uh, but we would got to wrap a truck. We wrapped a truck instead. But yeah, no, I mean, my tour was wild. We did 134 shows. I got doing arenas. Tattooed about, devoted to it. You did like stadiums, arenas. I did arenas, yeah. Uh, you know the O2 Arena in London? Yes. I became the youngest person to ever headline and sell out the O2 Arena in London. Look, look at my goosebumps. You can see them from here. <laughs> that is so insane. It's crazy. That is, God, oh my God. That's like for anybody who wouldn't know the O2, that's like comparable to Madison Square Garden here yeah. or the Staples Center. Yeah. Insane. Like the like big arena there. I can't. What's that feeling when you walk out to the O2 Arena and it's sold out and you're how old? I was 16. Holy fuck. I was a baby. And you're just so normal now. I would have been off my rocker. Oh my God. <laughs> like it would have been over for me already. Yeah. yeah. The feeling, the feeling on stage. Wait, hold on.
when a 16-year-old Miley Cyrus headlined the O2 Arena in London. Jojo, you and Miley were the same age. No shade, no shade, but you were the same age. No shade. And every crowd is different. It's mm. wild. And there's similarities. I'm only everybody. saying that because she literally just said that she was better than Miley. So every crowd is unique. Me agreeing like I'm ever going to play an arena. Get out of here. You know, like, you it's, software. yeah. yeah. Like, for those who arena don't want this. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> you kill me. Continue. Um, I don't know. It's just like, I feel like I I can't be nervous when I'm on stage. I can't mess up when I'm on stage. Like, it just feels so comfortable. It's yeah. the, like, it's the strangest feeling. And it just feels like the ability that I can go like this and they'll scream. Like, yeah. it's. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's the most love you ever feel. And I, we always just talk about like the tangibility of it. Like you see the numbers online. The tangibility. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I was like, know, it's me. Someone else is making words up. I love it. Um, but like actually seeing the faces and the numbers and the, seeing it is just the craziest feeling. And with you, it's probably not too because every kid's got a bow on and a fucking a t-shirt. Yeah, and and like, I started the whole wearing the costume thing. You yeah. Every yeah. little yeah. child came dressed as me. Every single Absolutely. one of them. Yeah. Oh, she started airs. So Jojo Siwa has also started the trend of people dressing up for costumes. Okay. I started that. Every kid <laughs> yes. came in a JoJo outfit. But JoJo came bow. today, JoJo. It's a thing. Yeah. It's a thing. I feel like like now people are gonna come to like my new music concerts yeah. as old JoJo. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm here for it. It's, I mean, it's just an iconic for everything. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, and I think like if all... Britney Spears had an arena concert tomorrow, people would come to hit me baby one more time. So yes. it's just you're an icon. You know what I mean? Thank you. Um, and I think like all of that part of me live for forever. Like there will be yeah. some sort of tribute yeah. to old me. I kind of I toured around this idea of like when I got an adult music tour to do. I mean, I think I'll always perform Boomerang. I feel like that's yeah. like my yeah. my baby. But then like and I like that you don't resent it. No, not at all. And then I mean, I have. 20 something other songs yeah. and I was kind of thinking like it might be kind of fun how like Taylor has her surprise songs that she does mm -hmm. to do that but like which baby Jojo song will I sing that yeah. just do a different one every night and as your voice so matures like doing like a, a slow down rendition yeah, like a of something yeah. in the most respectful way who is going to a Jojo Siwa tour in 2023 literally I'm asking like what who goes like I feel like Jojo has such an older persona now that it's like does Jojo still do all the music stuff which is really I mean, cool. okay. Personally. Like, I'm so excited. Oh, I'm not. So fun. Back to everyone wearing everything and all that type of stuff. The reason why I actually had you on the podcast is because I saw you on, I don't know his name, one of the David Dobrik adjacents. What's, you were just on his podcast. Yeah, um, Joe. Joe. Literally, um, today. I saw that. That's why I DM'd you. I was like, oh, she's doing some podcasts. Let's yeah. see. You know, I'm, I'm reaching for the stars here. Just like a week commercial. Let's see if it's canceled. <laughs> and I know you're, I might just make you repeat yourself, but I, I want to know okay. what I'm talking about right now. How many SKUs of different JoJo products are there? Oh my God. I wish I knew that answer. Um, I know of bows, there's something like, I know it's within eight. There's either 800 or 8,000 different styles of bow. Just, just bow. bow. I think it's 8,000. Of just bows, different ribbons, different sizes, different shape. Like, will just, you give me the quick bullet point rundown of everything that Jojo Siwa like brands products? Yes. So it's easy to do categories. So there's, yeah, there's no yeah, no that's products. what I mean. Yeah. Like. So there's apparel, accessories, bedding, home goods, food and beverage, mm -hmm. toys, electronics, books, like DVDs, CDs, um, party shit, party right? supplies, yeah. um, cosmetics, so shoes, dumb. I guess, like in apparel. There's li God, literally somebody did like a house tour. I forget what it was, but I saw a house tour where they like you have like a room. Yep. And it's like all the different kinds, like yep. a Jojo store. Yep. Yes. Like, I, we used to. Oh, maybe it was Northwest. We used to play this like game of like name a product, and like I can tell you if I have it or not. And like people would name all these random products, and I. Like band aids. Yeah. Cookware. Cook Jojo. Cookware. Yes. I have like plates and forks, like like little kids sets. Um, hairbrush. Yes. Duh. Toothbrush. Yes. Duh. Singing in. Not singing. Oh my shit! I have a <laughs> Hi, Pusheen. I'm gonna come back like a boomerang. That is so, so, God, that's so cool. It's so, just going to be forever and ever and ever. And your kids are going to be like, you can't go to Walmart yeah. or Target without seeing your face. Nah, you know who it sucks for is my exes. Oh, oh my God. Biggest flex in the most <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sorry. I know this is, it is No, that is so, that I'm, is my dream. <laughs> I'm very, my first ex, I'm very good friends with yet. Mm. Um, and and I, she's a great human. I feel very. Is this the one you told her you'll wait for her to finally realize after she came out as bi? You know, because apparently no one's bi. You know, you're you're gay or you're not them, right? JoJo, the ally. Yeah, yeah, there's a good way to put it. Um, I just couldn't figure out those words, but like we joke around all the time. She's like, Damn, I can't go to Target. She's like, I cannot go to Target without seeing your face. I would and, cry. Yeah, that I'm able to laugh about it. It's the most yeah, being JoJo in that situation, lit. Ten out of ten would recommend being anyone else <laughs> in that situation. Oh my god, and I would just, I would be the person that wouldn't be the person in Target. You know, I would get the shit out of that suit for sure. Um, speaking of uh, speaking very highly of your first ex, I don't know about this to this day. Um, the I think it's so crazy, and it's just a comment. I would say the same thing about Miley Cyrus as well, as much as I love her. I think there's something to be said about someone who is willing to put their face on products that they probably don't even approve just so that they can make max amount of money off of the consumers. You know what I mean? I think there's something crazy in that. I w like the Hannah Montana model of like Disney Channel doing that as well, where they put her face on everything, no matter how bad the product was, just to like sell the fact her face was on it. You know, then children, you know, the children are like the mommy beggars for the money. I know you made a TikTok where it was like, you were talking about one of your exes, like they just wanted the views. The views yes. I don't necessarily think it's a brag when you're selling that much shit, because it means like, it it means nothing. You nothing means anything to you, right? Yes. Um. What is that drama? What happened? That's a great question. I wish I fully knew myself. <laughs> um. I've. It was huge. Though. I know it broke the internet. That yeah, was Disney, right. not Miley. True. Yeah. Like the TikTok. Yeah. So I had a relationship that really that start that started public on the internet. <laughs> yeah. Was public on the internet <laughs> and ended public on the internet. Um, you learn a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 is everything okay? Are you all right? Do you need water? Copying a lot. Are you good? Right? I'm good. Um. 
navigating relationships is very hard. Mm -hmm. Navigating lesbian relationships is even harder. Mm -hmm. And navigating relationships on the internet is lesbian relationship on the internet. And lesbian relationship on the internet is is good night. Yeah, triple homicide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really it's it's tricky. And I'm young. Listen, like I I not a rule book. No, it's not a rule book. There's been multiple places where I have been without a doubt used, whether that's mm. for views, whether that's for Brilliant. money, whether that's for experience, like, mm. and, and that is fine. It's happened multiple times. I mean, it's not fine, but it sucks. Yeah, it sucks, but it. specifically an instant, I was very deep in a relationship and I kind of just wanted it to fizzle and yeah. we had kind of talked about it fizzling and I was fine with that. Like she was fine with that. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere, um, I was being made out to be a very bad guy on the internet. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's not cool. Like, cause, because look, at the end of the day, I'm at this point in time, 19. Yeah. At this point in time, she was 23. Yeah. We're both very, very young. Yeah. There's no need for anybody on the internet to be the bad guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we both messed up. We just went to her standpoint at 19. Yeah, yeah. And I thank you. I just, I tried to keep it clean because I've learned over the years. We both were the bad guys. So, I mean, your stuff was just put online. So maybe, like, what? The, like, power yeah. kind of that I can have with the internet. Yeah. And I don't want to use that for ill ever. Yeah. And I have, and I've messed up absolutely. And I've learned from it. For example, with the CCB incident, like I learned like that's not fun for me to shit on people on the internet. I yeah. like it. I have too much of a voice and too big of a platform to do that. And so now with relationships, I'm very careful, very sensitive. Not me taking this in. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I, um, I just, I've learned what to share and what not to share. Oh my share. God. Prick went to say something again, but she's just giving up at this stage. Oh my God, you guys, we're almost an hour in. Very proud of myself because I Good job soldiers. Talking to situations that the internet has never found out about. Yeah. And that makes me feel like I've learned, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And it's, it's just good. It's better. That's good. I, I'm I'm like, I feel like I get, I get what you're saying from that situation and it's hard. Cause it's hard and there's just a lot that the internet doesn't get to see uh -huh. you know what I mean and I think once it was right in front of my face and I saw it and I was like oh there's a camera up and you're acting like this and now the camera's away yeah. and you're acting like this and it's a shit feeling. And, a shit feeling and the internet only sees what the camera was filming they don't yeah. see what happens when it went away oh my god and, yeah, that, and they believe what they saw and that's what was really hard for me to navigate is like I knew what was going on there's no possible way for the internet to fully know so without you using the power to be like yeah so once I realized your audience yeah like, once, that's really like mature though once I realized there was no it was a lose-lose situation I was like all right well I'd rather lose like this you know what yeah mean? and I feel like it's it's hard because you want to love freely you're still just a person yeah. you know what I mean having to learn from that like unfortunately so many people look at you as a meal ticket you know instead of who you are like my last two talking to situations I've been like no they're not using it. there's no way they would be and then after I'm done yeah I look at it and I'm like fuck yeah like, when you're in it if you can't see it I really like, I hope you have people around you who also are like try to be aware of that like I'm so I have so many situations with Ari where he's like Ari like Tana like yeah, he wants up. to yeah he wants to be on that TikTok and he wants yeah. to go on that plane yeah. and he wants to you know and, and like I, I just had this happen where I was I was with someone not not dating not anything but talking and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they like really launched TikTok, like really hard launch. And I was just like, like, what a good time. Yeah, yeah, I was like, that's a little convenient. You know what I mean? Like I get the intention now why you wanted to be closer to me because you wanted, again, like you weren't using me for a club, but you were using me for experience and knowledge. And that's yeah. cool, but don't trick me to be in love with you. Like I'll be your friend and do that. You know yeah. what I mean? And, and just be honest about that 100%. Yeah. Like it's just acting like out of nowhere. I think there's something that is to be said about that could be the possibility, but there's also something to be said about the fact that every single person uses Twitter or Instagram or TikTok or whatever, and someone having a social media platform while they're dating someone who has a social media platform doesn't even mean that they're using them. Like, it could, but like, you know, it's just kind of you being like, ooh, everyone's going to use me. And listen, everyone could, but if this is your attitude, then it, it's just like this, ugh, I don't know. Like, yeah. I, I just really want to do this TikTok trend. I want to make an account and be on TikTok. Yeah. Like, how do you? No, like, yeah. you know, which is just like yeah. a whole. But it's like, hard. It's been, it's, out of all the things I've done, dating's been the hardest for yeah. sure. It's just, I don't know. And I'm, my life is very public. Everything about my life is public. Yeah. And uh, my, my second relationship was with somebody who was public on the internet already. But like my first, for example, was massive learning because she wasn't on the internet. And mm -hmm. so immediately when we started dating, I was like, how do we navigate this? Because I didn't want to shove it onto her. And she was very good. My first girlfriend was very good about being okay with whatever, but not ever doing it herself like yeah. she didn't care but if i was like babe there's this tiktok couples are doing are you down she would be down you know what yeah. i mean like we have very good dynamic and you'll find that again it just is fucking hard. it's just so hard yeah my dad did the other day oh my god i love my dad so much he's the best he was like love is so easy to find you just have to look for it and i was like bitch i've been looking Wait, I'm i've been searching. looking like, I, got I, got binoculars. Binoculars. I got a fucking telescope i got it all i'm yeah. searching dog yeah. i'm mad bye chloe i know i yeah. know it's just ugh, it's like it's hard but you're gonna find the most amazing person i am you the best single person. friend right now really every single one of my people is in a relationship every single one of them oh my and i would make it everybody's problem i would make everybody miserable oh my god like fuck your happiness i tried ace said oh yeah that's right didn't she claim her ex used her for fame apparently I just make them tell me the bad. Like, yeah. I am everybody's confided. Like, tell me the shit that's going on in your relationship. Mm -hmm. That way I don't want one. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's honestly it works. smart. It does help, like, I don't want what you have. Yeah. Someone's like, oh my god, we're so cute. We just went on a date. I'm like, what's your last fight about? Yep. Like, yes. that, I yeah. literally straight up ask my brother, like, what are you and your girlfriend fight about? Yeah. I ask my best friend, like, what are you guys, like, what's stressing you out right now? <laughs> that's, I'm going to start doing that. That's an amazing through. way to know. It helps, yeah. Oh my god, Northwest. Oh, I love that little kiddo. She's awesome. So, what was that like? Really cool. <laughs> I don't, I mean, North is awesome. I, 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 I we, yeah, Kim was great. Kim, Kim is my favorite. You're going to love this story. My favorite was North is at my house. North was little. North was only five. This was about four years ago, five years ago. And she made a mess. She made a mess with slime. Like, yeah. she sequins and everyone. I'm a YouTuber. Like, I don't give a crap. That's better for me. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, let it go everywhere. And it goes over to the camera sky. And Kim, Kim Kardashian, like, also, like, send the nanny. Like, I didn't expect Kim to come, but whatever. Mm. Kim came. Kim was like, where
so sweet, so nice. The kids, of course, but the, I mean, Kim is awesome. What does she smell like? Beautiful. Uh, I knew it. <laughs> no, you're not. You're not. <laughs> yeah. Just like, just like you would imagine. Jesus yourself. Christ! Back to Brooke being ignored again. We're over an hour. We have like ten minutes yeah. left. Yeah. She smells just like you imagine. Like, is she's perfect? And is North like so funny, Kanye? Like, so <laughs> this was at the time when North was still really little and she was really shy. I remember mm-hmm. seeing the video. North like didn't want to talk. But yeah, I feel like all. now I wonder what North would be like now because now I feel like she's really come into herself. I would Facetime her and she would talk so much. She would she would talk with her friends. She would talk with me. She would sing. She would dance. Then at the house she was yes. No, I get that. Yes, I was so no. shy. I would have had a stroke probably if I met you when I was fucking. Five. And the house, like it's like straight up Disney World. Like the house, yeah. I think she probably like, would have ignored you, Brick. And also, it's really tricky for little kids to process that I'm the same as what they're seeing on YouTube. Like they don't, yeah. they don't process that I'm a real human. You know, if I met Hannah Montana, it would have been someone would have taken me to the hospital. Oh, the hospital. oh but remember, JoJo's better than Hannah Montana, Brick. Oh. I like, still like like her so much. It's like unhealthy, and I should probably be same in, in institutional. We all should be one hundred. I'm the biggest Miley fan ever. Mm, I just exactly. saw things like we were talking exactly. about the archive earlier. She said that she has 21 storage units with all the stuff that her fans have made her. Really, Miley? She keeps everything she said. I need to. That means she still has my T-shirt that I gave her on the bangers tour. <laughs> Jojo, she has her T-shirt. Oh she my god. Definitely. Who else do you stand? Miley, Lady Gaga, Freddie Mercury, Elton oh John. Uh huh. Uh, have you met Elton John? Oh yeah, he's. What was that like? So it's actually it's kind of funny. It's a good story. Um, so it was. She it was the best story. <laughs> my Miley story is also a really good. Well, one. Well, that one, that one. one. Okay, so I'll, I'll do Elton first and Miley second. Miley is such a good story. So Elton, so it's his concert. This is I was baby. I was 15. So I hadn't even gone on tour yet for like context on how young I was. Mm. And I was about to go on tour. My tour tickets were on sale. Like Crazy Same, right? Same um, tour company, both with AEG. And so we were on the list for his meet and greet because it was his concert. And what happens, Elton, he wakes up and he decides, I'm going to, I'm gonna do my meet and greet or I'm not. And that day he woke up and he decided he was not going to do the meet and greet. Fine. Whatever. So it's Don't a show. <laughs> that is so crazy. Is that true? If it's a paid meet and greet, that's fucking crazy. What the fuck? No, I right. almost said it before you did. <laughs> so he, he decided no, and then we're in our seats, and the president of AEG comes out to me. She's like, change the plans, out of the show, Elton wants to meet you, come back to where we were. And I was like, cool, great. So we go back to where we were, we probably wait for like 20 minutes after the show, and we're chilling, and then we go into this room, and there's like these few boys in there, and I didn't know who they were, and then after they introduced themselves, and after my mom and I Googled who they were, and it was me and my mom in this room with two guys, and Sasha Baron Cohen, who is so Borat. Funny. Oh, so funny. Um, and then they're like, all right, Jojo, they took those boys in first because Sasha and Elton are close and they took them in first and then um, they're like, all right, Jojo, like, come on, Elton's ready for you. And so my mom and I go and my mom only has her phone out videoing, yeah. right? And I mean, I was expecting like walk in, take a selfie and dip, right? Yeah. Like quick, and the security's like, put your phone away. And we're like, oh, like, sorry, like, yeah. okay, like you don't want to do anything wrong, right? So we go in and we're in Elton's dressing room and it's me, my mom, Elton, his husband, Sasha, the two friends, and that's, that's it. Just squad in the dressing room, go in. Dream El- blunt rotation. <laughs> <laughs> Full right. Elton, Elton's like, hello, darlings. Like, braces my mom in a hug and a kiss on the cheek, gives me a big hug. He's like, it's so nice to meet you. You both are lovely. Did you enjoy the show? Like, so kind, so nice. He's like, take a look around, look at my jewelry, try on sunglasses, whatever you like. So then wow. cut to him and Sasha are um, sitting on the couch together. And my mom and I for like 10 minutes have just been like staring at these sunglasses because it was never like a, it was nice to meet you, cue for us to leave. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we're just like awkwardly still standing there. He's like, just hang out. So we're hanging out, and then all of a sudden, um, Elton and Sasha started talking about the Bohemian Rhapsody movie. Uh-huh. And at this point in time, I am number one fan. Like, yeah. know every detail about this movie, every detail about the actors, every movie about Queen, like, every detail about Queen, over, everything. Like, obsessed. Freddie Mercury, single handedly, while he's passed away, changed my life. Yeah. And so he's talking about it, and Elton and Freddie were best friends. So he's talking about it, and I'm losing my mind. And the other I'm like, Mom, that's not what they're talking about. And then they get stuck, and they're trying to figure out who did the vocals in the movie. You're like, and uh, Sasha was like, um, it's not Rami Malik that did it. And who was it? And Elton was like, yeah, who did it? Wasn't that God, this they accent. Two vocals, but they mixed it with somebody else. What was that guy's name? And somebody else was like, and my mom was like, what? And I was like, I either can't come up with his name is Mark Martell. And finally, after like, they're stuck on his name for five minutes, Google it, right? Yeah. But finally, after like five minutes, I was like, it's Mark Martell. And I'm nervous, I'm 15. And Elton was like, what did you just say? He kind of looked over and I was like, the guy you're trying to think of, it's Mark Martell. And Elton was like, come join us. And so then I'm sitting on a couch. It goes, Elton John, me, Sasha Baron Cohen. My mom and Elton's husband are chilling. And we just chat for 45 minutes, tell stories. We just kind of tell them what I'm about to do, like just all hanging out. Then we leave it. I mean, it was the best night ever. Um, wow. When I came out to the world, like a few days later, I got a random number call from the UK, and I, I was like, "This is interesting." Answered it like kind of thing as a prank. Hello, it's Elton John. Called You're me. Fucking called me when lying. I came out. Oh my god. Yeah, called Jumped me. Up. Unreal. And just talked for probably ten minutes, saying how he was proud of me, and it, it just unreal. And then, yeah, he invited me to come to his LA show. He, I went to a show of his in Australia. With, um, met up with his husband there. Like, just had have had so many interactions. Done some stuff with that his foundation. That is so like, amazing. Like, that is that's so the sweetest story. Cool. I think it's the best thing ever. When someone's awesome. your idol and they supersede, you know, because people always say, "Don't meet your heroes," and it's scary. But it's, when someone's your idol and you meet it's them, unreal. Yeah. Okay, ready for the Miley story? Wait, am I ready for the Miley story? All right, POV, it's the worst day of my life. It is 2020. It is the absolute worst day of my life. My mom calls me. I can't believe they all have their um, feet on the sofa with their shoes. Okay. Okay. All right. Talk your shit, guys. I love Brick's body language here. (laughs) She looks so fierce. All right, Miley story. Wow us. Come on. And I was like, why are you yelling at me? I don't know where your wallet is. Your wallet, where'd you put it? Is it in the car? She's like, no, where'd you put it? You had it last This isn't Miley yelling, by the way. We're at rehearsal. She's driving on her way. And I was like, what do you mean? And then she was like, yesterday, while we were eating, you
Anyways, so as we're walking back into my rehearsal studio, I hear, and where we rehearse, there, it, there's always people there. Like, the rest of those days was, the rooms with me, uh, Megan Trainer, Justin Bieber, Kanye West. Oh my God. That's the arrangement of the rooms. Gaga rehearses there, everybody. Like, everybody. Like, what's after? I said, yeah, no, literally, it's awesome thing out there. So I'm walking back in, and I hear a 4 by 4 playing in the room. And it's just a band, but I'm like, I know that beat. That's it's a Miley song. Miley Cyrus. So I told my mom, I was like, that's Miley, like, that's her song. So I go in, and we hear no vocals, nothing. Then I'm on dinner break, and I start hearing vocals. And I go back into my rehearsal with my choreographer, and I told him, I was like, Richie, I would never do this. I will not be back in rehearsals tonight. I will be camping outside on this picnic table, waiting for Miley to walk out so I can just see her, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. All I did, I've never met her. When I was little, I said, two years old, I said, I want to be a brain surgeon or hand Montana. Like, she's uh -huh. been my life. Uh -huh. And so I sat at the picnic table for like two hours, and finally I was like, fuck it, I'm just going to go in. I'm just going to go in. People come into rehearsals all the time. Kanye's crashed my rehearsals. Megan's crashed my rehearsals. <laughs> like, like, literally, it's like Kanye's like, hey, Jojo, you crashed an audition that I was having once. Like, Names. Like, Woo! So I was like, I'm Let gonna, me I'm pick them off the floor. Say, Hi, I love you and run out, right? I'm in different clothes. I'm in a Jojo t shirt and costume pants because I went dumpster diving and I had to change. Like, it's just been a fucking day. So uh -huh. I go in, and as I'm going to walk in, her security guard walks out, and I like quickly like press buttons on the vending machine to look like I was not suspicious. Uh, yes. Run back out. My mom's like, how was that? I was like, I didn't do it. Her security walked out. So then I was finally, like 30 minutes later, I grew some courage again. I was like, okay, I'm gonna do it. I'm really gonna do it this time. So I go in, and as I'm going in, her mom walks out, and I just start losing my mind. So I would have been like, just excited to see Tish. Yeah, yeah, I like literally lost my mind, and I was just like, I thought I was gonna get in trouble for like walking in there. And right behind Tish is Miss Smiley Cyrus, and I was just like, I, I was just gonna come in to say I love you, and you're awesome, and you're amazing. I don't want to interrupt. And she was like, Oh my God, you're Jojo, right? And I was like, Yes. And she was like, Yeah, I've seen you on the internet before. And I was like, she was like Yeah, I've seen you on the internet before. Like, you guys voice. Yes. And I was like, Oh my God, I was like, You have no idea. I was like, This has been the worst day of my life. Turned to the best day of my life. Like, I couldn't even speak. Like, I we took a picture. I was losing my shit. She was, you know, just being like how I am with little kids. Like she was just like being so kind, so yeah. nice, so fun. I want to find like, oh this God, picture. Dude. I love Miley, so I want to see this picture. Jojo Siwa, Miley Cyrus. Oh, so this is, oh, it's, you know I'm a Miley fan because I can tell you literally what, oh my God, she posted a video with Miley rehearsing. Girl, I thought you were so scared to meet her. Why? I know that this was, yeah, <laughs> it's embarrassing. I know the era of Miley just based on her hair. Miley Cyrus, I've loved M for as long as I can remember. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today without her. She's been my favorite since day one. Best two hours of my life. Okay, so here we see the photo. The video has no sign, but Miley rehearsing. This is right before the pandemic. Oh, oh, that's sweet. Banger, sir. Love. Jojo, you've said something I'm interested in. Keep it up. Sorry, that was rude. Actually, you've been very rude to Brooke this entire time. She was wearing, she was so cute. She was wearing, like, um, she had these little, like, leathery pants on. And, um, was this in her, like, layering era? This is in, like, like rocker era. <laughs> and so she was like, we're doing a full run-through in two days. Do you want to come watch it? And I was like, um, fuck yes. Like, lost yeah. my mind. That same day of that run through was supposed to be my friends and family show, and I walked into yeah. my rehearsals and I was like, "Guys, like, cancel the friends and family show." I was like, "Push uh -huh. it later." I was like, "I'm going to have friends and family." Anyway. Yeah, I, like, <laughs> I do the same. So then, like, I go home and like Miley messaged me on Instagram. I'm a DM from Miley Cyrus, <laughs> and she was like, "Hey, come to the studio at seven o'clock," and I was like, "I will be there." Like, I don't know what time it was, but I was like, "I'll be there." Went, watched it a full performance. Um, she like, you know, like it was like her friends and family show, but all her people were like watching. You know what I mean? I was there having the fucking time of my life. It's probably Miley Cyrus concert. Hard. I will never forget. She sang "Party in the USA," and she changed the lyrics. Um, uh, so I follow the girls around me. Seven million on a Nashville party. All the us let us. I guess me and Jojo never got the memo. I lost my mind. And then we did four by four, and I know the dance to four by four for the Vegas tour. So I got up and we did the dance together. Oh she my would God. be like, she would swear. She'd be like, sorry. Like she like we interacted the whole. She let me sing "Wrecking Ball." I sang it off key. She said sorry to her vocal cords because I I threw her off. Like just the best fucking. Oh, that best is human. so iconic. She is. That just ruined my day because I can't handle how jealous I am. I'm not kidding. I I'm, really like, I'm jealous of myself three years ago. Like <laughs> like Absolutely. the fact that I can't relive that day every day of my life. Like it. Worst day of your life to the absolute best day of your life for sure. Literally. Have you ever met Gaga? No. So that's the that's coming so, next. That'll be the like thing with Gaga is Richie is my choreographer and Gaga Richie's also Gaga's choreographer. There have been days where because she'll rehearse there too. He will run back and forth between rehearsals uh -huh. between my rehearsal, her rehearsal, my rehearsal, her rehearsal. And he says all the time he's like come over. I was like no, it has to be natural. Yeah. It's like I can't pop in, but like oh I cannot wait for the day. I just I know, know she would. He, will. Love. she would he said that we he talks to her a lot about me <sighs> and like there's like mutual love. Like she's that's I'm gagged for you. Forever. I'm gagged. Yeah. I, I just knowing you, it's gonna be like you're gonna be in like a helicopter with her because yeah. everyone loves yeah. JoJo. Remember. Uh, my dream is to be a Lady Gaga backup dancer. I know. I don't know if that would be allowed, Jojo. I feel like people would be so excited that you were there, <laughs> like selling out our own stadium, trying to be a backup dancer. Brooke has been so nice this entire time, just for her to be so dismissed. But, but like, imagine, yeah, like, it's like, it's like Josh Peck and Oppenheimer. Yeah. <laughs> Brooke, Brooke references Josh Peck. I've done it every episode the past seven episodes, but it's just like, so, like you it's can't pay so attention cool. to anything yeah. else. Like, if I went to a Lady Gaga concert and Jojo C was a backup dancer, good job, Jojo. I spent so much time in twenty twenty. <laughs> She's been so day. nice to her. Like, there will be a day where something happens to a dancer and you need somebody that knows every step in one phone call. And I will be that person. I can't. Wait, did she do that one time? She like brought a fan up in the middle of the concert and knew every single like lick of choreography, like everything. That's how we do. That will be one day. She's in Vegas this weekend. I'm like, do you want to go? Oh my God, we should go. Hi, Junkie. Your celebrity
I hope Brooke talks about being ignored in the next podcast. I think that I really, I hope that Brooke gets her justice moment. I hope they do. I know they're going to talk about the Colleen thing with the Trisha, but I really hope that they talk about this. Justice for Brooke. Um, yep. I, I think Billy, Billy's like my, I would love to see that crossover. Right. It, oddly, like, it works. It works oddly. Like, it, like, it, like, it doesn't work so hard that, like, it actually might. You know if what I mean? If we see JoJo with, like, lime green hair next week, we'll know what's going on. <laughs> For sure. Okay. Yeah, she's awesome. How funny that would be. What? I want to just know. What's your death row meal? My death row meal? Okay, I eat insanely healthy right now. Mm -hmm. And I have for, like, the last year and a half. All I would want on death row, it's my last day. Yeah. I want ramen noodles, pizza rolls, and craft mac and cheese. That's I would throw it back to my fucking 10 year old diet. Absolutely. I, I eat all that yeah. literally right now. Absolutely. Like, give me some extra cheddar plastic goldfish. Oh my God, I just had those last some time. Sour punch straws. Like, take Better the blue. fucking smart sweets and throw them out. Absolutely. I want some real. I love smart sweets. They're all I eat now. But I know, like, I've been trying to eat those instead of candy, but it's, it's not the same. They're amazing. But like, I just want to feel like absolute crap. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that diabetes pack. Yes. <laughs> give me donuts. Give me it all. Um, what else do I want to know? What's your biggest pet peeve? Ooh, my biggest pet peeve. There's, all, like, There's just no inclusion of Brick in this at all. We have like, like, like one or two minutes left. Per Brick. For someone to be, be like literally being interviewed on someone's podcast and to completely put them aside the entire time, what does that say about someone? Honestly, special forces got rid of a lot of my pet peeves because it just didn't matter anymore. Yeah. Like there was there was a day where literally like I used to be like a germaphobe. Like do not share drinks, do not share food, like nothing. Okay, how you mean though? <laughs> yeah, like wouldn't share, would maybe share with my mom if it was like necessary or with somebody like a girlfriend, like or, yeah. or, or, or I had a boyfriend as well, but like that was it. Yeah. Um and on special forces, there was days where like I literally would just like drink my water, you need water right now. Like and like they I would give it to like some of the boys first and then I would drink right after them because it just didn't matter anymore. And it was either drink right. or don't. That's probably a crazy experience. I can't even imagine. I because like, like it does take away all the little shit because you're so focused on like and you don't get to speak living. to family, you don't get to speak to yeah. the world, you don't have your phone, you don't get to talk to the outside world you anytime you have a moment of celebration you're knocked back down to zero yeah you i mean there are countless and you chose to do this you were like I want to do this. Second I got the yes. brooke is just like blankly staring now i mean brooke has been sitting there like a tripper for an hour and a half and tana is yawning i i leave nothing in comparison no literally nothing nothing but i like whenever i talk about special forces in, in length i call i call it selection so selection means show and recruits means cast yeah and like whenever i talk about it like i literally will be like during selection because like i you never thought it was a part of a tv show oh because it's just like you don't care you're doing shit that's so you are just there and you are you are in it and there is no like the only time the wall broke of the tv show really was sometimes you would see cameramen but they would wear our same outfit so they really blended in yeah and um other times you we got mic'd twice a day they'd have to change our batteries mm -hmm. but you couldn't talk to the crew they wouldn't talk to you like the same guy might doesn't you couldn't talk to them like no, there was never you could only talk to people on the show mm -hmm. who, who was your favorite cast member me tyler cameron and nick Mile got really close yeah. what does this babies? end I can't wait to babies. right now i'm in i want twin boys and a baby girl that's Aww. that's my phase i'm in right now but i mean it changes all the time and i'm gonna be happy with whatever little nuggets i end up with mm -hmm. brooke might, michelle said brooke might as well just watch the podcast with us Yes, but I want to tour. I want to perform. That's my that's my like passion. So there's no like fall off Wyoming moment. Like you, you're gonna be doing the damn thing. I want to do the damn thing. Yeah, I not fall off Wyoming. Somewhere else, you know, yeah. it does, and I, I don't try. Listen, I've tried to predict the future, and yeah. I planned two weddings, yeah. and I planned babies with people, and yeah. I clearly was wrong. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I think after I planned my second yeah. wedding, and I was wrong. I was like, yeah, okay, no more planning anything. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Honestly, I'm the same. Brick's not even giving anything anymore. She's given up. You know how much it means to us to have you on campus. Oh my god, I love being us. Here. I'm literally in awe of you. I think that's the craziest. You're like, the craziest you're the life craziest story. Time. And, and after all of that, it says a lot about Brooke that yet she is still being so fucking nice to JoJo. Still being so nice. I feel like make a wish right now. You're doing get out of here. I know. No, you're doing. I'm like, like, like talking myself. You are so. <laughs> oh my god, Brooke just got spoken over while giving a compliment. Anytime. And we'll yeah. be there at the special forces. Group yes, week two. It's gonna start. I can't wait. All right. Again, I just think that it really. It really tells something of someone's character with how dismissive they can be of people. And I think that we saw that today. So again, Tana said that they're going to address the Colleen thing. But it'll be interesting to hear if they talk about Joja or Brooke being very dismissed. And it's just... I don't know. It's I'm not loving it. I'm not loving it at all. Well, y'all, that's that. We survived, Trips. We can return to base.